what is up today i'm going to bring you what i like to call the dumbbell matrix i've uh, originally taken this idea from dr gary gray who has his own dumbbell matrix and i kind of made it my own so what's the dumbbell matrix so when it comes to working out one of the best pieces of equipment that we have is dumbbells unfortunately most people kind of stay away from it you know because the machines are a lot more easier to try to get in and out of but again when we look at functionality the dumbbells are going to be the best bet which would so functionality meaning the carry over to day to day and plus when it comes to it like if we're thinking about full body workouts and kind of getting the most out of our time and energy when we go into the gym the dumbbells are going to really get it also like to use the cable machines and you know I, <laughs> I have plenty of videos on that where I'm tying full pull push legs all in one shot and that's what we want to try to do too most people kind of like I've always earned that habit of splitting upper body lower body or chest tries this day pull push and then not combining the legs and everything full body exercises in there which is like a cardiovascular high intensity interval training I'm um, gonna get your heart rate gonna burn a crap load of calories gonna get the core in there and again kill 20 birds with one one stone so to speak so let's like I, I you know when it comes to, to, to dumbbell exercises there's so many of them but I want to see like these are the meat and potato ones so besides combining them like what we're gonna do today is that we can also isolate those these exercises I'm gonna make different video for that where I tie the legs in with it so today we're just kind of just kind of focus on the upper body now you can get a, a crazy cardiovascular workout with the, just doing your upper body and you'll be surprised. So, you know, if you did legs, let's say yesterday and today you wanted to, do, you know, to get the cardio in and your legs are a little bit sore, we can use this right here and really get that heart rate flying and, and, get, and, get, and burn a ton of calories and strengthen our heart all in one shot. So we're gonna break this up into a pull and push. Now, when it comes to just kind of like dumbbell access to it, you're not all you're gonna need is light dumbbells. In fact, 10 pounds are gonna, what you're gonna see is will, will really crush you if you're doing it hard and fast and, uh, and you got high reps and that's a way to make it harder. So you're gonna increase the reps. So today we're gonna do 10, but as you progress, you can do 15. And I'm telling you, when you're going through all these exercises and you're doing 15 reps with 10 pounds, that's pretty impressive. And when your weight goes up to 20, you know you you a bad, bad mamma jam, all right? So as you're gonna see, 10 pounds, it'll get the job done, especially when you're starting. So with the pull exercises that we're gonna do first, now those are bigger muscles, and you're gonna find that you can um, go heavier. So if you want, so some of my clients, like I might have a bench in front of them, and I might have, um, say 20 pounds or 15 pounds for the pull and then maybe five or 10 for the push because that, the push is gonna be a lot of shoulders and that's a little bit smaller than the back muscles. So let's break down the pull exercises one at a time. And what I would say, and do this with me, do it with me, I'm a tactile learner, that's why I'm a trainer, I learn by, by doing. So I would say do these with me. So I'm just gonna grab over here some tabs. So the first one we're gonna do is just a bicep curl with a twist to really hit the biceps. So I'm gonna up and twist. So if you can see my hands, and I really wanna get that twist. So if I had water in my hands, I'm trying to pour it out the side, okay? So I'm here, yep. And everything's gonna be alter al alternating because when we alternate, we're gonna skip the core in there. Don't worry, I want you to use your whole body. You're gonna see me twisting and using my legs. Yes, do that. We'll, I want this to be a full body thing. I don't want you to just be like where most people, oh, you shouldn't be moving and you need to be sitting here doing this. No, use your legs, throw it up there and get it. It's lightweight. I don't want, it, you know, you shouldn't be rocking with your back, but use your legs. And the goal is to do this fast. Yep, most of the time, all we're doing is slow controlled movement. We want to hit both ends of the spectrum here, all right. And if I, if you know, if you're a beginner, yeah, start slow. Don't kill yourself. But the weight's going to be light, so that's why I recommend like start off five, ten pounds. Okay, so I only got 
what do I got here? 15s, all right? So another way to progress this is by, by balancing out one leg. So if I go up and I'm curling, I'm here. Because as I go faster, it's gonna increase the balance or the stability component of it. So it's gonna make it harder. So I'm constantly challenging myself. And as I flip through exercises, I'll flip change my, my leg position. If I find that my right side balance is worse than my left, then, then I wanna run through this all on my right. So kill the weakness like I always say, you know? So the first one, we got our bicep curls. Let's do 10 of each. So let me just give you the speed of which I want you to go. So here, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. Good. Next one is a hammer curl. So it's gonna hit a little bit different part of the bicep. So it's here, like I'm hammering nails. Yep. So I can, so now I think I was on my left, now I'm gonna go on my right. I don't know which one. But I'm gonna change my, my foot position, right? So one, one, two, two. Six, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. All right. So, next one is a upright row. If you have bad shoulders, I would say do an armpit row, where I'm rowing it to my my armpit. So right here. So one, one, two, two, three, four, four, five, five, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. Right. Let's go to our regular upright row. So just below the chest, I'm gonna stop right here. Good, notice I'm whipping through this, all right? So we did our upright rows to the side, to the front, all right? So now let's take and go into our bent over row, like we're picking something up. So the first one's gonna be a bent over, what I call a low row because you're pulling it towards like your stomach or your pocket. The key here now, because most people don't feel like that, bad posture, and that'll put a lot of stress on your lower back. You gotta push those hips back. Notice how I got that curve still on my back, and I'm gonna row to my pocket. Now I can bring this into a balance again, or almost like a, like a single leg deadlift position. I can start off and toe touch, and I would recommend you do that too, so in the first few exercises that I showed you, if you're struggling with your balance on one leg, you can just kind of toe touch with the other one. And eventually, the, like you're gonna take less, or I'm sorry, more and more pressure off of the floor until you finally you're not touching the floor at all with, with your one foot. So if I'm here, so you can see me, I can pull that up and I'm here and I can toe touch if I need it. Okay, now that's my low row. I'll hit more of the middle muscles in the back. Now to kind of hit the posterior delts or the, the upper back, I'm gonna get it a high row. So my high row, my shoulder, my elbow's kind of lined up with my shoulder. So the same thing, I can bring it to a balance. On one, two, two, three, three, four, four, six, six, seven, see if I can, nine, nine, ten, ten, yep. The last one too, and I like to give this one a little bit of a break because usually when we go right into the push, it kind of just gives it, it's a, it's a good exercise just to stretch. With those light dumbbells, now I would recommend doing this with heavy dumbbells. So I call them shrug circles. So shrug up, drop them back, and then let the dumbbells or the weight kind of pull those shoulder blades down. A lot of people are tight here that I've noticed as a trainer. So this is a good way to just kind of open that up and stretch it. And then as a PE teacher, I used to tell my students, you know, we want good posture, pick your shoulder blades up, drop them back, drop them, there you go, right? So, and now we're just, we're not alternating, we're just gonna do 10. And again, I can bring my foot into a balance if I want. Good. All right, are you ready? Let's run through all those as fast as we can. All right, so you got your balance if you want them. So we got our bicep curls with a twist. One, 
One, two, two, three, three. Hammer throws. Upright row, or so armpit rows. For our uh, front upright rows. Bend over a little row. High row. Good, and then our short circles. Okay, I really like this set. This exercise is a warm up. So weight is light. You're pretty much opening up everything that you can. You know, so, you know, usually when you go to a machine and you're warming up, start light, go a little bit, start getting a little bit heavier. And the best thing about this too, is when it comes to hypertrophy, so muscle building, because when we gotta wanna take those muscles to failure, we wanna, we're pre-exhausting them, right? So if we do this in the beginning, we can also do this in between sets as an, in, in, as an interval, because it's getting our heart rate up, we can go into, into a, uh, like a strength or hypertrophy exercise that'll bring the heart rate down a little bit. We're peaking it back up with this. And again, pre-exhausting it, really getting that muscle to get to failure, which is pretty crucial in hypertrophy training. So that's the pull phase, right? Now, when it comes to that pull phase, again, to progress it, I can go heavier weight, right? So if I know I don't only have an hour in the gym, I can't, I don't want to extend on that hour then you either go faster or you go more weight now if you want to add some more reps to it you can you do the pull like i did uh i'm sorry so with the 10 that we did here you can do 12 you can do 15 you can do 20 think about 20 you'd be whoo, getting it right then you can increase the sets of it. So we just did one set, full set of the, of the full pull matrix. We can go back and do a second set, third set, right? So we can go right into it. Now when I show you the push aspect of it, we can, and we can let it rest. We can do the, because we're working different muscles here now, because we're, so we're just gonna superset, which means we're going from one exercise to pull to push and then back to pull. So I can go pull, push, pull, push, like that, and they, or if I want to make it really intense, like I was saying, then we can either go and do pull, pull, pull again, okay? But if you, like in the beginning, just to let it rest, pull, push, pull, push, okay? So that's an easy way to progress this workout. And like I said, when you got 20s in your hand, you're gonna be killing it. I guarantee you, your body probably looking pretty darn good in it, okay? So let's take the push now and break it down. So when it comes to the to push aspect of the phase, again, I wanna look at all three directions. So we got sagittal plane, which is front, right? So if I'm pushing front to back, okay? So, and we're gonna hit the extremes of it, right? Most of the time when we're pushing or doing an overhead press, it's straight up. So if we want, if we do the extremes of it, so if I'm going here and I'm going back here, Right, I'm getting that that bad boy already. Cause that's it's in the in the middle. I got the I got the two ends. If that makes sense. So, I would not recommend doing the push behind you or posteriorly if you have shoulder problems. So you want to make sure that you don't have any shoulder pains to begin with. You want to make sure that you don't have kyphosis or forward head or rounded shoulders or bad posture because that's going to put a lot of stress in there. If everything's lined up and good, yeah. Oh my goodness, your hand does reach behind you and you should work it, right? Most people feel, oh, it's unsafe because everything don't work it, right? So I got forward and I got back. Same thing we got. So now when it comes to push, I would say you're gonna wanna drop the weight. So let's say if you did tens and it was a, gave you a hard time with the pulls, here you're gonna use five or, or eights because again, it's a smaller muscle 
and you're gonna find out they're gonna they're gonna burn out real quick. Okay, the burn too is a crucial part of it because we want to train that metabolic part of it. So when it comes to muscle building, also like that metabolic phase or that burn burning aspect of it will get you there as well. So especially when it when it comes to older, such as some someone in my age or older, they find that research has shown that that's a uh, huge part of still being able to build muscle at older age. So let's take those two. And again, I can tie my balance with it. Okay, so I can balance on one leg and I got my, so I'm here, yeah. So, and that kind of hits that top part of the chest, right? So one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. 10, 10, right? Another one, my clients <laughs> like to actually call this the punch matrix, because that's what you're doing. Now I can get back on this one, one, one. So see how my hands are parallel on this? So that'll keep your shoulders in a better uh, uh, position. It'll take the stress off your shoulders, well, especially when you're reaching back. So one, one, two, two, three, six. So balance right now. Good. All right, there's our front to back. Now we got side to side. So if we think about a split in our, our body down the middle, we got our left side, our right side, right? So my right hand has got to go left and right, right? But we're going to alternate. So that going left right here with this one is going across my body. So we're going to go across my body. And again, like I was stating before, to hit that full aspect of the shoulders, normally we're just pressing here. To get the inside part of that shoulder, the chest, you gotta come across to hit more of the outside of that. We gotta go out wide, right? And that's what we're gonna do right here. So let's go cross body, parallel grip. So I'm here, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six. All right, now we gotta go out wide to our body, right? So, and this is one of the safest ones. If you have shoulder problems, I'd, I'd recommend just doing the front and then doing the wide here. So here's the wide. One, two, one, two, three, three, four, four, five. Bang, bang, bang. Good. Now let's look at rotation. Same thing rotation, right arm's gotta go left rotation and then we got to go right rotation which is behind us and if you look at the six positions that video that I've done on the on especially the lunges you're going to see that, that our hands are really mimicking what our legs and feet are doing in those six positions now with the uppercut which is going to be that front rotation see if you can get this a lot of people lose that internal rotation of the foot, which would be like in a golf swing. So I'm on my toes, so you can see that, and I'm pivoting. And then I put that foot down. I almost call it like, you ever see a child, child rotations? And I'm gonna go down and up, because I want my legs to help throw it up. If you ever watch Mike Tyson throw a punch, he's really low, and his legs are what explodes him up and where all the power comes from. And when you do it correctly, it's almost like your shoulders aren't even doing it. Your legs are throwing it up, all right? So, let me see, you see me here? Here, one, one, two, two, three, three. Notice how I'm going straight down, straight up. I'm not leaning in most of the time, I'm not leaning that part. I'm dropping down, straight up. pushing through this foot right here. And this, you, you, you know you're doing it right when you feel that butt kick in. All right, so we got what I like to call that closed rotation. Now we got that open rotation, which would look like this. Like I'm reaching behind. All right, 
there's the six positions, front, back, side, side, rotate, rotate. All right, now let's go fast and blow through them. All right, here we go. Ready? Notice how my hips are turning completely 180 on that. Then we get our back one. Dumbbell matrix. Put it in your repertoire and you're welcome. Eat that up. In my next video, I'm gonna show you how to add the upper body matrix to the lower body matrix and take it to a whole nother galaxy, a whole nother level. Cause if you think you got your heart rate up now, where do we throw the legs in there? and we get the entire body, all in just a few minutes. So you're getting, and like I said, when you go into the gym, it's your time and energy, right? Get the most out of your time and energy. And with that being said,